Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You're watching NDTV. Haryana, the land of Kurukshetra that once witnessed the epic war of Mahabharat, has posed many interesting questions this time. In 2019, if you remember, the BJP secured 40 seats, forming a coalition with the JJP, which won 10 seats, while the Congress party took 31 seats. But in the recent Lok Sabha elections, the BJP lost five of the state's parliamentary seats, while the Congress regained five seats after being shut out five years ago. Now, both parties, Congress and BJP, have promised the moon to the voters this time and outreach to all Chhattis Biradri, a common reference to all communities of Haryana. But what are the issues that shape the Haryana poll campaign this time if BJP is battling 10 years of anti-incumbency? Congress also faces the challenge of keeping all of its big faces happy. Talking about faces, BJP is banking on fresh faces and Congress on tried and tested war horses. How do these parties' campaigns stack up? That's what we ask tonight. Joining me uh, is a panel of experts. Uh, uh, we have uh, Dr. Kaushal Kant Mishra, who's a spokesperson of the BJP. We have Mahima Singh, spokesperson of the Congress Party. We also have Mayank Mishra, who is my colleague and with NDTV. We also have Sajin Kumar, who's a political analyst. Thank you all of you for joining me on this uh, uh, show. To you, Mayank, first, uh, you have actually studied uh, a lot of data. You're a man of numbers. Can you tell us what exactly is driving, uh, you know, what actually drove the campaign? Because, you know, one thing that was very significant was uh, the uh, Kisan, Jawan, Pehelwan pitch. And this is India's one of the most prosperous states. Uh, tell us what are the key indicators that you would be looking for on Tuesday, the counting day? <clears throat> two questions you asked. And uh, with regard to first question, two words that describe the situation in Haryana are relative deprivation. And I will give you two data points to suggest that to support my uh, hypothesis. One is with regard to per capita, district-wise per capita income distribution. We all know Haryana, among large states, Haryana has the highest, one of the highest per capita income, but that is largely because of contribution from Gurgaon. Hmm. Gurgaon, and this is not official figure, I read it somewhere, Gurgaon's per capita income is more than 7 lakh, hmm. whereas adjoining Nu's per capita income is close to 1 lakh. Hmm. And situation is no different in other parts of uh, state like Rohtak, Sonipat, Jind and Yamnanagar. Per capita income is roughly around 2 lakh or less than that or slightly above that. Hmm. So relative deprivation and since Gurgaon is at the heart of Haryana, hmm. everybody who has visited there once hmm. comes back with a sense of relative deprivation. Hmm. One part of state is growing hmm. while others are lagging. Right. And that is because... and. <clears throat> there, um, there was one interesting paper which came out um, just a few days ago from PM's advi Economic Advisory Council, which, which that report has mapped performance of all states vis-a-vis -vis national growth. And there is one very interesting data point uh, about Haryana there. Haryana kept growing and Haryana share in India GDP crept, kept growing till 1990s mm. and around 2000. And it, it peaked at 3.8% 3 of India's GDP. Okay. And, but after 2010, it has started declining. So there is a sense of despondency, I would say, in most parts of Haryana, except perhaps uh, Gurgaon. And Gurgaon too is, uh, we all know, uh, it comes to news for all wrong reasons. Urban yeah. apathy is very acute in yes. Haryana. So big economic churn is taking place in Haryana. And political changes are perhaps reflective of that. Right. Talking about Gurga, Gurugram, let me go across to Kaushal Kant Mishra. Sir, an interesting, uh, you know, ex-member of the BJP, Naveen Goel in Gurugram, has been talking about how the party's own pitch when it comes to smart cities failed in Gurugram. And you, of course, he has been expelled, you know, by your party because the party also expelled a lot of rebel candidates. We have seen a lot of rebels, a lot of independents, not just in the BJP, but also in the Congress party. But in the BJP, your OBC Morcha had also left uh, Karandev Kamboj and he also accused the party of just using the OBCs as Vote bank. So clearly, on the social engineering front and also the Jawan Kisan Pehelwan front, the party seems to be facing a lot of challenges. Uh, first of all, I would like to say that we are not uh, uh, putting, uh, taking care uh, uh, shoulders of Jawan Kisan and Pehelwan for fighting our battle. We are doing on the concept of Sabka Sat, Sabka Vikas, Sabka Pras, and Sabka Viswas with the cumulative development of whole society as well as whole country, including Haryana. It's not that we are we, we are using the shoulders of Pelwan, Kisan and, and Jawan 
every time by the Congress for the, their political gains. The, the, this, is, this is actually uh, uh, shameful for any political party to use the shoulder to fight their election. It should be like upliftment, betterment of the society, taking care. We are providing the complete health, world's biggest and largest health care uh, insurance program is provided by uh, our government. We are doing everything. We are becoming the fifth economy of the world. We are, we, are, we are the fastest growing economy currently. So in my opinion, uh, the public will vote on the basis of what the BJP has done all in last 10 years, especially in, in the country as well as in Haryana. These internal fight and pre-election movement of a uh, few political leaders from this party to that party, that party to this party, it is a normal, regular phenomenon of all the political party and every election. Okay. So in my opinion, it's work which will pay to us. Hmm. Uh, uh, Mahima, you know, this is something I've asked you before also, but every day, you know, we look forward to interviews of Kumari Shelja because there is something or the other that she is saying. So clearly, you know, uh, while the Dalit vote is important there, I do feel that the mishandling of uh, Shelja factor uh, could in some ways prove to be a big challenge for the Congress party because we've seen in the past as well, we've seen it in Madhya Pradesh where we saw this whole fight between Kamal Nath and Jyotra Ditya Sindhya in 2018 and of course in uh, uh, Chhattisgarh with Bupesh Baghel and T.S. Uh, Singh Dev. So clearly, you know, and of course in Rajasthan with uh, Sachin Pilot and Ashok uh, Gehlot. So clearly, how confident are you of uh, this factor not being, uh, uh, you know, uh, too big a price to pay for the Congress party? Jai Hind, Basudha, I was hearing the BJP spokesperson very carefully and I must thank him on behalf of the uh, Haryanvis because he has made it amply clear that they uh, do not put uh, themselves on the shoulders of Jawan, Pehelwan, Kisan. Rather, they thrash them on the roads in Delhi. Rather, they thrash them on Sansad Marg when a newly built Central Vista is being in inaugurated. Rather, they uh, backstab them by bringing uh, farm laws and later withdrawing them. So, thank you to the BJP spokesperson for reminding the Haryana population once, Haryana voter once again, of their backstabbing ways. Uh, and uh, I must say, Vasudha, as you question me about my my revered leaders, let me say that Haryana, as it goes to vote tomorrow, awaits a new dawn, a new dawn of hope. Because clearly, after June the 4th, Modi factor is behind the BJP. It's, it's now gone behind. And the BJP is now past the Modi factor. Till June 4th, they sought uh, the votes in, in the name of Modi magic. Now that magic has faded away. You're talking about our leaders, each single of whom is dedicated to the party's ideology and its propagation. When you talk about Kumari Seljaji, yes, she is the tallest uh, Dalit leader that Haryana has today. Yes, she is the tallest woman leader that Haryana has today. And so that is why she uh, takes a clear stance on um, uh, various issues related to the state. And when it comes to the internal uh, policies of the party also, I think she has made it amply clear where she uh, aligns with the party and where she, where, uh, she does not. And my, uh, mind you, it is only possible in a democratic party as ours. It is not possible in, a, in an autocratic party like the BJP, where you see a century of resignations coming in right ahead of mm. such a critical election, when the state has been um, betrayed by the incumbent party for the last 10 years, where in 2019, they were almost ousted by the population of Haryana, but then they joined hands with other backstabbers okay. and form the government. Okay, let, let, let me also bring in Sajjan Kumar here. Sajjan Kumar, Kumar, Haryana is known to be the land of Fayaram Gayaram and I was reading up on its history and it looks like, you know, there have been many times when this hung assembly has come into the picture. This time, if you look at the campaign, the Prime Minister really relied a lot on, you know, this Karchi Parchi and Damad Dalal. So clearly a lot of catchwords there. And of course, uh, Rahul Gandhi being consistent with his caste census pitch. How do you... You know, how do you see the comparison of uh, the, the party's campaigns? Because manifestos look very similar, except for the fact that Congress party is uh, promising legal guarantee for uh, farmers. Other than that, it looks like both parties are promising a lot to voters this time. Yeah, certainly issues uh, remains the same and both the parties are trying to champion all the causes, be it the occupational identity of farmers, of uh, kind of soldiers, etc., or about uh, the other uh, the uh, sociological identity, OBCs, caste, community, etc. 
But on that plank, if we just uh, reverse the uh, analytical frame from top down to bottom up, and you see, unlike Punjab, Haryana since beginning, since its creation, uh, did not have a very strong religious or uh, kind of a regionalist sentiment. And therefore, the caste and community-centric identities, they acquired the primacy, and that became the plank of the mobilization also. So that, that, that is why this time when we see, while both the parties are trying to win over all the sort of... Uh, uh, political units, be it about the occupational or sociological, what we see uh, uh, on the ground that in the 10 years, uh, BJP should have done a lot more to mobilize the voters. One, uh, in terms of the caste association, you see the cardinal, cardinal mistake that BJP uh, kept on committing was letting the biggest anchor of the state, the chart community, one-fourth of the state, unite. I mean, unite in the sense that in the rural area. Two, if we see while uh, BJP has campaigned a lot, what we see that even its core voter, that is the 30% of the state your, your state population, that is the OBCs, besides the uh, uh, Punjabis, Baniyas, etc., we do not see the kind of enthusiasm this time. So when you go on the ground, right. uh, what you used to say in 14 and 19, that sort of things are missing. So therefore, while the manifestos almost mirror each other, right. their reception on the ground uh, seems a bit kind of weighing against the BJP in 2024. Right. Uh, Mayim, coming back to you, you know, there are very simply put only three possibilities that the BJP manages to come back to power for the third term or the Congress manages a comfortable victory or then it's, you know, it's going to be a hung assembly, uh, you know, whether independents and uh, the other candidates, the smaller parties, JJP and INLD, which are in alliances uh, with uh, BSP and Azad Samaj Party also play an important role. On Tuesday, what are the things that you will be looking for uh, with respect to Haryana? Since voting is tomorrow, so I will refrain from talking about age or not age to any, any party or any alliance. I will look at four or five things which are very important with regard to Haryana. First, first will be how others have performed. Others, when I talk about others, I mean non-BJP, non-Congress parties. And Haryana has a, has, a, has a history of strong regional forces since at least 1977. And in all states, and we have discussed it, in most of the states, we are converging towards a two-party system or two-aligned system. Whether Haryana also follows the pattern or not, we will see. In 2024 Lok Sabha election, we saw a clear division. Two aligns walked away with all the seats. First, second will be how southern region of Haryana votes. Mm. Southern means Gurgaon, Faridabad, Palwal and all. They count for 18 seats and mostly urban and rich areas of state. And BJP has dominated this scene and they, they have sizable population of OBCs also. Mm. So, and OBCs of Haryana have been loyal soldiers of BJP. Okay. Whether this continues or not, that has to be seen. Second is about northern region, which is, and in recent years, in recent months, we have talked about Dalit upsurge in favor of Congress. Yeah. Whether that stays or not, and northern part of Haryana is dominated by Dalits. Mm. So we will have to see whether upsurge grows or it was just one of the. Okay. Talking about central region, which is dominated by Jats, mm. and yeah. we, we all know that Jats have no, never voted en masse. Mm. They, their votes have been split. And there is a talk this time of consolidation of, consolidation of Jat votes in favor of one particular party. We, we, know, we don't know still. Okay. But counting day, we will get a clue. And lastly, <clears throat> Congress spokesperson talked about Shailja Ji being the tallest right. women leader. In all other states, we have seen uh, women voting tacti tactically and making a significant impact on outcome. Right. We have not talked about something like this with regard to Haryana. Haryana yes. Whether something like this happens in Haryana or not, we will see on counting okay. day. Okay. Um, uh, Okay, uh, going back to Kaushal Kanji, uh, you know, there's one thing that all leaders talked about with respect to the, uh, you know, dignity of Dalits, you know, be it uh, Kumari Shelja or Ashok Tanwar and, you know, Mirchpur violence, the clashes were brought in again and again by both the Home Minister, the Prime Minister also spoke about it. But clearly, sir, with, uh, with Ashok Tanwar going back to the Congress party, uh, do you also feel that uh, uh, there could be, uh, you know, uh, the at least the advantage with respect to Dalit votes? And remember that BJP has been losing, uh, you know, um, electoral advantage 
advantage in reserve constituencies for some years now. Do you think that some of the corrective actions that the party took with respect to e-tendering or reaching out to sarpanches or even the change of CM should have happened much before? Vasudha, we, going somebody and uh, coming somebody is not going to change our party because our party is a cadre-based party, ideology-based party. Uh, tomorrow, uh, uh, people of Haryana will say five dean Indian National Corrupt and Criminal Party, which is first is drug. We have seen how much amount drug has been captured by some uh, now ex-Congress uh, member. And we have seen how the P Punjab is now, uh, we call Urta Punjab. Um, probably they will do the same thing with the Haryana. Second is Dalit. We have seen how the Shailja Kumari uh, was treated in Congress and still getting treated in Congress in a, in a particular manner. And that, that is what the Dalit factor will do. Third is uh, okay. Dhokhe Baji, Daga Baji. How? They have promised one lakh uh, jobs in Himachal. Nothing happened. They promise uh, old pension scheme. Nothing happened. They promise in Himachal okay. that petrol prices will okay, come we down. Very go few and see. It is let one let of the highest. Let me go across to Mahima and, for the and, last word. No, no, no. But let, let me finish. And there are few more Ds are left. Okay. Dependar Huda is another D and in my opinion, public will take a wise, opinion, a wise decision okay. tomorrow and they will choose the party who Wait, is fighting Masin, for the country, going to be taking the care of every citizen party. of the country. And also ma'am, you are from Haryana and I want to ask you this. This was a state where, the, where clearly the Congress had an advantage looking at uh, what the Lok Sabha results showed us. This is one party where, this is one state where your party could have taken some chances instead of just fielding the same faces again, like 98% of your people are old faces. Uh, see, when the BJP spokesperson speaks on your show today, he actually testifies how unnerved, how unsettled the BJP is uh, uh, looking at its uh, forth, you know, forthcoming debacle. Tomorrow, Haryana is going to vote against them. You are asking me about our faces, but when the BJP spokesperson frivolously says that they are a part a party of the cadre, we have not seen Mr. Ram Vilas Sharma, who, st who stood with their party's flag in those times when nobody knew the BJP on the grounds of Haryana. We have seen his absence. We have seen Khattar's face being, see, he used to boast faceless government. Now, his face has been removed from their posters and their election material. Okay. And the BJP spokesperson here, I don't know with what face is he talking about. I see Savitri Jindalji on your screen right now. She had just months ago, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. left behind the ideology she always represented. And then the BJP actually uh, gave her nothing. And today, you see all the independents, most of the independents that are standing are rebels of the BJP and okay. are standing against the BJP's and, you know, unpopular ways over the last 10 years. Whether it is uh, the farm laws, whether it is the wrestlers uh, mishandling, whether it is the portal scams, okay. whether it is... The okay, but we're completely out of time. Thank, Thank you all of you for joining me.